So those of you that have been listening and that follow HartfordCountyLiving.com, you know I'm very big on supporting local businesses, at basically anything local. And I am asking you to support this local business because you're also supporting Baby Bella. And you may be asking me, who is Baby Bella? Well, in April of 2021, she was hospitalized for heart failure. Little baby. And she's home now, but her mother and father, you know, they had to make some changes. And the mother decided to stay home with baby Bella and, of course, her sister, Nora, um, to take care of them because baby Bella still has some things to go through. She may need a heart transplant. Hopefully she doesn't. Um, But they decided, her and her best friend decided to start a business to basically, they have to keep that income coming in. So this is their story. And they started this business. If you get a chance, go to perfect, that's P-U-R-F-E-C-T, craftyladies.com. Whether you buy candles, shirts, keychains, whatever, they do custom orders. Check them out. They're local. They're right here. And you're not just supporting the business, but you're supporting the family as well. So on this episode of Harford Candy Living with Rich Bennett, I have the two perfect crafty ladies, Cindy and Rachel. Stay tuned. There's a new educational daycare open up in Bel Air. That's right. Child Time is open. Child Time offers infant, toddler, preschool, pre-kindergarten, and school age programs. Their teachers receive ongoing training throughout the year, and all of their staff members are CPR and first aid certified. They're continuously working to provide quality care by developing strong relationships with their families. So, If you have a young one and you're looking for that perfect educational daycare, call Child Time. You can even schedule a tour. Go to childtime.com or call them at 667-326-8145. Again, that is 667-326-8145. Welcome to the award-winning podcast, Harford County Living with Rich Bennett, coming to you from the Freedom Federal Credit Union Studios. Each week, you'll hear interesting interviews, commentary, discussions, storytelling, and more. Here's your host, Marine Corps veteran, professional DJ, entrepreneur, podcaster, and my father, Rich Bennett. I'd like to welcome everybody to Harford County Living with Rich Bennett. So I have two ladies on today. Um, that supposedly have been friends forever, but the one doesn't even know how to pronounce the other one's last name. Uh, but that's another story. So I have Cindy Ebline and Rachel Flachel. So that had like a French <laughs> thing to it, you know. And they started a business called Perfect Crafty Ladies, right? Yes. The way you spelled perfect is pretty freaking awesome i think because you you it's a play on yeah you guys have who's got the cats both of us <laughs> okay so it's a play on the cats um and this is a new business you just started this in may or june may we got um our official license and then um we officially kicked off our stuff in june what do you mean what do you mean your official license um so we registered for the business um i texted her And said, let's start a business. And over text message, we signed up online for our business license and our trade license and then launched in June. So LLC or incorporated? Um, Partnership. Partnership. Trade license? I guess because you're making stuff, you have to have a trade license. Yeah, and we um, sell things. So we're, yeah, so we're like a legitimate shop, boutique. um, Now, are you still working? I went part time. You're working part time. Yes. Rachel, I'm sure you're working full time from home, right? Full 
Okay, even you know because you like it full time from home because you don't like to talk to people. Um, so you're working part time now. Now, all right, for those of you don't, that don't know, Cindy is my neighbor's daughter in law, and I have close ties with Santa Claus, and she's got two precious little daughters, uh, Nora and Bella, and Nora loves Santa. And tries to teach me gymnastics. But tell everybody why. And I see them at, at Halloween. Yeah, Halloween, right? Yeah. Halloween. Halloween, they come around. Um, tell everybody why you started this. So back in April, um, suddenly um, my daughter was sick. And we went to the hospital to find out that she was in heart failure. You're talking um, about Bella, right? Then this is Bella, my youngest. And she was six months or five months old at the time. She is now eight months. Um, she's doing much better, but we spent about two weeks in the cardiac ICU. Um, and taking care of her is a lot. So we have about 12 appointments a month now that we what? go to. Yep. So between physical therapy, cardiology specialists, and um nutritionist, all of that. Um, we averaged 12 appointments a month, so I wasn't able to continue to work full-time to take care right. of her. Holy cow. Now, but she's doing better now. Yeah, we are stable. stable. Um, so her heart is good for her. She still um, is in heart failure, and we see the head transplant doctor down at Hopkins. We're not needing a transplant yet or anything like that, but her heart... Um, condition is such that we need to be followed by a heart transplant doctor okay you scared me at first because didn't she say head transplant that's what i thought i'm like wait a minute okay it's the heart why does she need a head transplant damn cindy come on you're scaring the hell out of me already okay so heart trans heart transplant yes so when um, your ejection fraction, so how well your heart is pumping your blood to your body, when it's at a certain level, if it drops any lower, um, that would mean that you're not really supplying enough oxygen and blood to your organs. So right. um, we're stable now, so we're okay. But if it got any worse, which it's not going to, fingers crossed. But, no, it um, won't. Yes. But that's why we have to see him. That's he manages her care. Okay, but but it's not. She may not need a heart transplant, though, right? That's true. So she has okay. a diagnosis of dilated cardiomyopathy. So one third of the kids get a hundred percent better. One third of the kids are stabilized on medications for the rest of their lives, and one third of the kids um, decompensate and need a heart transplant. So I guess like open heart surgery doesn't. They can't do that, right? No, because structurally there's nothing wrong with her heart. It's right. not squeezing well enough. Wow. Yeah. You know what? She's going to be in that third. It gets better. That's just, I mean, you look at the pictures and everything, and she's just – it's like she's having the time of her life. She's always smiling. She's it's Now, is she doing – no, she's too young to do gymnastics, right? Yeah, she is too young to do. Okay. <laughs> she's crawling already, though, at eight months. So Is she really? Yeah. I mean, she's doing great. You would never know anything's wrong. Wow. So, all right, so you decided you wanted to start this business because of because of what was going on with Bella. Yes, to be okay. able to supplement my income since I had to go part-time, be able to work from home, essentially. Right. So here it is, and we're recording this in July. So you've had it, you got. You say you guys got the license in eight, no, May? May. May. So it's been three months, two and a half months. How's the business been going? Really great. Um, I noticed you got the website up, too. Yes, we have our website. Um, it's fully up and functional. We've already done two vendor events, and we do our third this weekend. Great. And um, our candle launch is coming um, July 24th. We're partnering with a local boutique, Kaleo Lane. They are mm -hmm. hosting us for our candle launch, so that's very exciting. So all right, explain to everybody what you do besides candles. <laughs> so we are a... Does Rachel talk at all? <laughs> You know what? Hold on, Cindy. Hold on, Cindy. Take, take, take a breather a minute, Rachel. So what is it that you guys actually make? Um, we make anything you need. Um, really? Because I need a new computer. We can bling it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you make uh, not everything you need, but... <laughs> it, so, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, so we do, um, ideally, we do a whole lot of rhinestone work, vinyl, um, T-shirts. We can put we can put rhinestones on pretty much anything. Okay. Shoes, um, T-shirts. So when um, you say all right, when you say vinyl, uh, you're not putting rhinestones on vinyl, obviously, right? Or are you? You mean like vinyl decals or? Vinyl decals, we can do outdoor vinyls, which would be more of a. Um, for a building or something? Yeah, for a okay. building. Um, and we could technically put rhinestones on that. We can put rhinestones on anything. <laughs> we can Bet you can't anything. put them in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Not if there's no hair there, you can't. <laughs> Oh, God, I can see it now. Santa's suit's going to have rhinestones all over it. All right, so you, the rhinestone ladies, I kind of like this. Um, you've already done a few events, right? And you got more coming up. Now, can people buy off the website? Yes. Man, she was quick to jump on that one. Yep. Man, did did, did We're you? Hard on that website. I was going to ask you if you designed the website. Yes. You did, really? So, what would you design it with, if you don't mind me asking? Is it, I mean, Wix, Squarespace, WordPress. WordPress. WordPress? You love WordPress? Um, I'm starting to. <laughs> okay. Um, I had some some background in in web design, but not a ton. That's not mm -hmm. exactly my specialty, but it was nice to get back into it. But uh, WordPress is very um, plain, so just reading. That's about to change. Uh, yeah. Yeah, with 5.8, so... But with what we had to work with, it was a, it was a little bit more research. But um, I think I think we have a good design, and it's it's up and running and it's functional, and um, hopefully we'll start getting more traffic as we put ourselves out there with more events right. and, and just. So where do you guys do all this from? From home? Yeah. From both homes, or? Technically, yes. Um, okay. You guys live close by to each other? About half an hour. It's still a good drive. I mean, I hope. All right, so you got to be sending designs through the computer because, or do you both work on you both work on the same design at one time? In other words, if somebody calls you and says, look, I, I need, do you guys do logos too? All right, so I need a company logo, I need it on my shirt. I need you to design it. If you're a half hour away from each other, is just is it just one of you working on it first, and then once it's approved, you both can work on it? It just depends on the situation. Like that, it could be one of us designs it, and one of us actually does like the, the applying mm -hmm. it. Or um, if we need supplies, one of us goes gets the supplies while the other one's not like that. Kind right. Of so it it some of it is able to be worked separately, and then some of it we have to work together. Like when we did candles, we worked. So you, when you guys are doing the candles, you're making the candles yourself, the wax and everything. Yeah. Real, I was going to say, Cindy, you can talk now. She has been talking. <laughs> I think we broke the ice. I think she's comfortable now, aren't you, Rachel? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, the candles is actually like Rachel's specialty. So she was the one that started, was like, oh, we should do candles too. So hmm. she's teaching me. She's the expert. But, yes, we melt down the wax, add the dye and scent. <laughs> Okay, so with that, and so you're the expert, Rachel. Got re expert at computers, web design, everything. <laughs> Just not expert at talking. Um, so, <laughs> with the candles and the scents, what do you use? Essential oils. Um, so we have both fragrance oils and essential oils. It depends on the scent. Um, so not all essential oils take as well to candles. Okay. Um, some do like a lavender takes really well or like an earthy type scent they they're strong enough to have it um so we are starting a line of essential oils um i gotta smell this one they brought me in once so i gotta smell it that, Ooh, yeah, that's man a fragrance, that's a fragrance oil um soy candles in general we we wanted to go with soy candles um simply because they burn cleaner they're a little bit more eco-friendly um so because of that soy candles don't hold scent quite as well as as your normal um, bad for the environment candle. Do they burn faster too? They burn so soy candles burn slower and cleaner oh. and um, just better air quality. Like you know, like when you blow out a candle and there's like all that like the, the smoke. black smoke. Yeah, yeah. You don't get that as much with soy candle. That's really? A cleaner. It's a cleaner burn. Um, is so the wick different or? Nope, the wick is the same. It's just the way that the wick um, interacts with the wax is is different. 
I'll be darn. Okay. And so you need a stronger scent. So it's it's better in some senses to use a fragrance oil just because it it makes a stronger scent. Uh, all right, I got to ask now because this says black cherry merlot. We all know what merlot is. <laughs> Isn't that a wine? <laughs> is there a fragrance? A fragrance? A fragrance? Jeez. Okay. Is there a scent for the wine? <laughs> So that is or is there actually wine scent. in here? That, no, so that's actually a scent. That's a, a full scent. However, you can use products like that. You can, I mean, if, if we could get a strong enough wine, we could technically use it. People use... Um, that may not be a good idea. People start eating the candles. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, wax melted. Okay, I'll drink it. We're <laughs> currently working with trying to add like a coffee line and looking at using real coffee in the in candles. The candles? Mm-hmm. Yes. That could be pretty awesome. Yeah. In production. in production. So, all right, there's not a call. Co- well, I guess you can get oil from the coffee beans, right? You can, and you can you can get a scent. Like they have the essential oils has a coffee. Yes, you can buy coffee essential oils. Um, I'm learning. More. Okay, I didn't know that. Oils you can technically consume. They're not all just right. Like, yeah. So some essential oils, and they definitely have coffee. I. Wow. Coffee essential oils before. So, um, but I also drink a lot of coffee, and so, <laughs> so I have a lot of coffee to experiment with, and we just thought that um, trying to keep with the eco-friendly and the, you know, reuse and le- less waste. Um, wow. Try to incorporate real coffee beans, real coffee grinds into the candles and uh, all right, so how much coffee do you drink a day? <laughs> uh, what's, a, what's a lot? Come on, Rachel, um, tell the truth. Uh, gosh, probably two, about three of these. Three of these. What's that, 24 ounce? These are 30. Oh, that's a 30 ounce. <laughs> yeah. So that's I, don't, I don't put anything in it. Maybe two pots yeah. of coffee? Nothing in it. Straight coffee? Straight. Nothing in it. This is tea, but yes. All right. <laughs> so you're caffeinated up throughout the day. Yeah. How is it you don't like to talk? <laughs> <laughs> I figured you'd be like, oh, yeah, how do I do? I've been coffee for a long time. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Okay. All right. So the ca- <laughs> coffee scented candles. That could be interesting. Yep. Now, how long have you guys actually known each other, though? Since the third grade. Since the third grade. Yes. Now, we weren't always friends. Oh, here comes the story. <laughs> Why not? Who picked on who? I think Rachel didn't like me. That <laughs> Cuz you tried to talk to her and she didn't want to talk, right? <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> Which so you guys, I mean, did you grow up next to each other or go to school together? And then we became best friends, I think, in, like, the... By the sixth grade, we were best friends. Like, there was one summer, I don't think we spent a night, like, apart. Really? We went on vacations. We were always at each other's house. But now here it is, five years later. Yeah. And you you guys are more or less like sisters. Yep. Yeah. Wow. That... uh, Okay. So, who started doing the crafts first? So probably Rachel, because she was in Girl Scout. So she actually convinced me, and this is before we were even best friends, I think, um, that I needed to ask Santa Claus for a sewing machine, and um, he brought me one. So we've been crafting. At what age? I want to say it was like fourth grade. So you were still in elementary school and you got your first sewing machine. Yep. And Rachel had them longer than that. Really? That, because that's something my my daughter did too in elementary school, and they had a sewing machine sitting in the back, covered up with a bunch of stuff. So, but anyways, so all right, so you got your first sewing machine, and then, I, well, I take it you were just what sewing. Pat, I mean, were you putting clothes together, make designing clothes? What were you doing? Pillows, pajama pants. Um, Rachel did even more than me. Yeah, I used to take classes. But while well, in you know, elementary school. Yeah. Well, I would do it with, like, Girl Scouts and right. other groups and stuff. But um, I used to have classes for, like, elementary school kids at, um, like, craft shops or whatever. Like, Joanne's and stuff like that had classes. And so I would take the classes 
learn how to do it. And then so, like, I that was one of the classes I took was pajama pants. I did pillow cases. I did um, stuffed animals, that kind of stuff. And so then I always had the pattern and would make more. <laughs> so with this business you guys have now, have you thought about doing classes on that, teaching sewing? Maybe mm. not sewing, but ultimately <laughs> um, we are hoping to um, – open more of a wholesale um, kind of section. So we already have done some work for um, a local cheer gym, Alpha Athletics. So we created um, rhinestones for them, like did over 100 transfers for them. Um, So we are hoping to move towards that. We're doing a custom um, can sleeve, over 60 of those for like um, a baby shower coming up. Wait a minute, a what? A can sleeve? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. I knew so, that. <laughs> yeah. So, and then hopefully, um, we do, we haven't uploaded anything to our YouTube channel, but, um, we have created a YouTube account. So, <laughs> well, you, you have to find somebody that's not so camera shy, <laughs> Rachel. Well, if we do like classes and stuff, then I can be there doing the stuff and she can be talking. <laughs> well, yeah, I, and actually that's a great idea. Well, I mean, that you're doing this stuff as well. You can also talk. Um, you know, be, because this way, if people see the steps that you're doing it at, which means you just got to watch her the whole time. and t- That's, that's going to be hard for her, to, for Cindy to do. I'll make it work. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So with, with the candles, I guess the candles you can make, that's probably the quickest thing to make, right? For you guys? Ooh, no? It depends. It, 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 um, By bulk, in other words. In yeah, a, in yeah. Bulk, yeah, probably. So, is, are your candles in any stores yet? Not yet. So, how many can you knock out, let's say, within a week? Oh, hundreds. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we, we knocked out a, a... And this was Cindy's first batch of doing this. And because, because one of the... The benefits to candles is the fact that we can both do it at the mm-hmm. same time, the whole process, versus, like, if you're doing a shirt, you have to design it. One person has to design it, or there could be input, but right. one person has to design it, and then you have to wait. And then if somebody, like, say, we're doing, like, the actual cutting of the design, then you, the other person has to wait until it's cut to then move on. So there's just a lot of individual steps, whereas, like, candle making, a lot of stuff can be done together at the same time and making multiple scents multiple batches that kind of stuff so while you know while something's melting um another one can be cooling and another one can be we adding scent so it's just a, a lot can be done at the same time there's a lot involved in that there is a lot involved holy cow so all right is your, your guys goal to actually get a storefront or a location where you can like a warehouse where you can constantly make this stuff all, with of course a play area for the kids <laughs> where you guys can make this stuff all the time full time we would love to make it our full time gig um first i think the first step is um we want to turn my garage into um a full workshop we would like we're doing screen printing so we need a bigger area to expand our screen printing um side of things and also rhinestoning just more space how big is your garage the two car or one? Um, it's one car, but it's like a sing- it's a standalone building. It used to oh. be a horse stable, actually, um, back a lot of years ago, and they converted it like adding a roof. So well, that should definitely be big enough. So there's power out there and everything. Um, there was at one time, so it has to. There's some renovations to be done, but that's I think next on the Good next to work, on the Matt. list. Oh no, he can't do that, can he? Does he know what the, what he's doing there for that? I mean, might electrocute himself but hey i'm i'm willing to let him try <laughs> oh god okay oh gee that'd be awesome though because if i mean if the barn or garage is big enough which it sounds like it is if it was a horse stable for how many horses do you remember i think just one i mean like it's it's not a bad size but it's only well even a single a, a single car i mean that's big enough because with the all right, like when you're doing the candles, do you need a stove or anything? Or um, we just have a burner. Okay, so you can use a burner. Yeah, yeah, so you don't need like gas out there. Mm-mm. Just electric. Just electric, which you can 
for heat and air, of course, because yeah. let's face it, summertime you definitely want to stay cool. How long? How big? How much room would the screen printing thing take? So it just that depends. probably takes the most room, right? Yeah, it just depends on like the equipment. So um, right now we don't have a lot of large equipment just because mm-hmm. of space. So hopefully moving in there, that's when we'll be able to really um, start expanding that. Hmm. Okay. So five years from now, where do you where do you guys see yourselves? I, I see Rachel talking more, but uh, if business <laughs> business wise, Bella wise, we know where she's going to be. She's going to be doing gymnastics. She's going to be just fine. So business wise, where do you guys see want to see yourselves in five years? I would love to see us working our business full time, and hopefully having a warehouse space to increase production. And I'd love to see some of our products um, in local boutiques. I think it'll happen. And uh, what I'll do is, because uh, I can give you some contacts too, and you can contact these stores to see if they'll carry your stuff, especially the candles. Because that's if that's the quickest thing that you can make in bulk, get that out there, get your name out there. That's going to help a lot. Um, oh, you know what you could do too? I'm sitting here looking at the jar. Put your little QR code on the back somewhere. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised the tech person hasn't figured that one out yet. Well, we're, we're doing multiple lines of candles. So we're going to have multiple candle companies within our company. Um, with huh? Yeah. So um, these are actually our vendor. The one that you have is actually our vendor event candle. Um, it's just so that we can build. So there's a lot of opportunity with candles. Okay. So, again, we want an essential oils line. God, I got to smell want, this again. <laughs> we want ones that have um, possibly like a, a like a jewelry type thing in them, like a surprise. Ooh, yeah. that would be neat. Um, so you open it up and all of a sudden it's like, Ooh. Oh, you have to melt it, it down. Melt it down and you find what you eventually get to. That wouldn't that. ruin the jewelry? So really? we're hoping to launch that for Christmas. So those will be coming out just in time for Christmas present. I can see somebody now <laughs> buying it with an engagement <laughs> ring in there. Keep asking his, his well, not fiance yet, but girlfriend's like, when are you going to burn the damn candle? <laughs> burn it quicker. <laughs> That's the hope is in, well, we're going to start out with maybe just some rings or something. And then right. That's a that's a good idea. Has anybody else ever done anything like that? There, there is stuff out there. There is. I've never heard of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, we want to add that to our line. We also um, want to add a few more, um, like kind of in style, trendy type candle um, holders. So a lot of things with um, like a cement base. Yeah, we have like cement bases that. Um, we can put some rhinestones like in the cement so that it's because we kind of um, really want to focus on rhinestones a lot as well. So if we can incorporate that into like a candle line. A cement based candle? So it's, um well, and more eco-friendly again, because we're really trying to focus on that. So the hope is that the candle holder will be reusable as like a planter. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I see what you're saying now. I'm thinking... When you said cement-based, I'm thinking the whole candle is cement. It's like, how is that going to melt? <laughs> no, just like the yeah. container. Okay. So we're really trying to that's be a, a friendly That's a great company. idea, too. I like that. So it could become, you can have some of them become planners. Some of them could become can hold. I mean, uh, cup holders. We can do shot glasses, mugs. Well, oh, I wasn't going there, but okay. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yep. Oh, there you go. Your coffee scented candle is going to become a coffee mug when it's done. Yep. Get one heavy <laughs> coffee mug, but still. I mean, see, and I, I didn't realize the soy candles that people were making them because they're eco friendly. I had no idea. Um, a lot more is made in the U.S. Okay. Um, so soy is, is easier to get U.S. based soy, um, and it is. It's, it's just better for the environment it's better for um just it, just because it's a cleaner burn it's just better for the environment. i was gonna say probably better for your health as well yeah so what is it that that you guys 
don't do now that you want to be able to do? Or is there anything? We really have jumped in head first right. into it all. So um, the main thing we wanted was we wanted to be able to screen print um, to be able to handle large orders, custom rhinestone work, and now candles. So after July 24th, when our official candle launch drops, um, we'll just be working on increasing production, increasing our styles, and being more versatile in each like, you know, say? at this pace, you guys are going to end up having to hire somebody within a year, <laughs> maybe more than one person. I'm serious. I could see, I could see that happening, which would be a good thing. Yeah. Well, Matt you. really wants to work for us. What? Um, he does because he said, well, this is perfect. You know, I'll quit my job. I'll work full time for perfect. you guys. No pun intended, right? And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then when it's hunting season, he's just going to take off whenever he wants so he can go sit in a tree stand. <laughs> Sounds like a TV show. Perfect crafty <laughs> Nate, perfect crafty ladies, and one guy. <laughs> yeah. Perfect crafty, per, perfect crafty ladies and Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait till I see him again. <laughs> you know what you have to do now. Get a hold, get a hold of his hunting clothes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Ryan, put rhinestones all over that thing, and then he's going to be wondering, how come I didn't get a deer? Probably because you were shining like crazy, <laughs> Matt. So, are, but now, you guys both started with sewing. So uh, all the stuff you're doing now, nothing requires any sewing, right? Some of it does. Really? So I'm, we're actually making the pan sleeves from the material. We're not buying all oh. the pan sleeves. We're, we're That's like koozies for those of you that don't know like I didn't. <laughs> Koozies is a trademark name, actually. Is it really? It is. So that's oh. why um, we're marketing them as can sleeves because turns out it's trademarked. Well, what if somebody wants to put a bottle in there? <laughs> well, I mean, they can use it for whatever, but um, drink sleeves. Drink yeah, sleeves. there you go. Yeah. Drink sleeves. Then somebody, no, because then you'll get some idiot say, "Well, it didn't hold my thirty ounce coffee." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not saying you're an idiot, Rachel. I was just looking at the size of your coffee. So. <laughs> because we're making them, we can make them fit into 30-ounce coffee. Well, yeah, yeah, you probably could. Or, or, and not only that, but there's other stuff that's made from that same material. Um, for example. Right. What's, what's the material? Is um, it like a, a foam? It's, like a, it's what they make scuba, like, sweat, wetsuits out of. The, the wetsuits out of? Mm-hmm. I was going to say, isn't that supposed to hold heat and cool, cold? No, maybe I'm thinking of something else. So scuba material is it's the same material, um, but you can get it in different like thicknesses. Okay. So um, scuba material is typically a little bit the thinner version of it, which absolutely holds. Um, you can make can sleeves out of that. Um, you can also get a thicker version of that material, and that might that's more of a streamlined type uh can sleeve, okay. can sleeve. Um, but yeah, the, totally. This one. Um. So with those, you could uh, probably even make, which would require sewing too, like the zip up lunch boxes, right? Yep. We can, That'd we be good for that. A lot of potential there. And, um, Coolers. But, and because it, because we would be cutting it um, that way. Again, I'm I'm very big on like um, using everything. Mm-hmm. Um, that's like textiles. Um, I just I don't like to waste. Um, so a lot of times like with the, the can sleeves, there's like that cut out from the bottom and that cut right. out is actually enough to make other things like a lip gloss holder or a, um, hand sanitizer self. holder, things like that. Okay. Sorry. I thought, so I, thought, we don't, so I, thought we don't I saw a bug flying. So we don't waste anything. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. So, all right. So you, the, the, that material, which you can do a lot with, um, it sounds like to me what you guys can do besides, you know, just the the t shirts and the candles, a lot of promotional items. Yes, absolutely. Was that the goal? Yeah. So that's okay. part of like the wholesale customizable aspect. So we've done a lot of work. Like I just sold. Um, we do like key fob keychains. So mm-hmm. um, we just recently filled like an eighty um, key fob order. So wow. Yeah. So lots of like bulk ordering that's what we're looking forward to doing more of 
So how many local businesses are using you guys right now, if any? Um, right now we have two that have placed orders, and okay. we definitely have our names out for um, a few more. We haven't done a lot of promoting because we're also trying to focus on our own launch. Mm -hmm. So um, the goal is by next year to really be able to promote ourselves um, to businesses. I mean, not that we wouldn't now. But, right. Um, we, we need to get some inventory in there. So, yes, the, the we're going to do the, our own canned sleeves, but I would like to start getting in inventory, like so making them in bulk and leaving them blank, and then we can then screen print on them or rhinestone right. them or whatever. But because there is a lot of we're, – we're not buying the stuff already made, um, we're kind of focusing on trying to get our inventory of the blank stuff okay. up and then – that way, when we promote, if we get a big thing, it's not like I have to then sew the, the can sleeves and then do the designs. They're already going to be ready. Right. Good so, idea, yeah. yeah. So we're doing a lot of, like, ordering the, stuff, the supplies, getting that Prep. kind of stuff together. Prepping everything up. That's, uh, that's smart. Smart on your part. Cause stupid on my part because I wouldn't have thought of that. Even, like, the key fobs, um, like, we had to do them because it – because we had a big order, it had to be done. But those can be done ahead of time and then be ready to just vinyl them or screen print them or rhinestone them or whatever. That way they're just ready to go and it just takes time. It, we're doing all the, the labor stuff now. Right. And then we'll hardcore promote and, and go from there. So, all right. Now, when it comes to equipment, because I know a lot has changed since third grade and fourth grade. What kind of equipment do you use for everything? I mean, besides a screen printer, obviously a screen printer and a, and a sewing machine. I mean, is there anything? Because I, I know like crickets have come out. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Laser printers. late and, and I mean, all kinds of different stuff. So, I mean, is there any special equipment that you guys use? I'm a, I've been using Cricut for about five years. Okay. Um, and, and then we have a Sigma Laser Printer. As well, so a silhouette is really good for all the custom rhinestone work we do. Um, they allow us to get the templates, like cut the templates. But all the rhinestone logos we do are actually like we hand brush the rhinestones into the templates. Now I feel like a real idiot. I know what a cricket is. What is a silhouette? So a silhouette, <laughs> it's like along the same lines. It's a little less user friendly, as in like if it's not. If you don't use it a lot, it's harder to pick up on the program itself okay. that you use to design. Where Cricut is, like, really easy. They are even as, like, an Apple on your phone you can use. Um, so Silhouette is, like, I guess, like, the next step. Like, it's more serious, like, uh, if you're really into crafting, I guess, versus, okay. like, it's easy to pick up and just kind of learn. Huh. Um, and then we also have um, multiple heat presses. So, like, um, I think mine's 16 by 24 heat press. Um, is that for the screen printing? Uh, really for everything. So, the rhinestone transfers have to be, they're um, adhered onto garments with um, heat. Oh, they're not bejeweled or whatever? They are, but there's, um, like, a or is glue. That a, yeah, it's a yeah. bejeweled, but the glue, this way, we don't have to do it one by one. I was gonna say, yeah, God, I'm glad you see. I'm glad you told me that because I'm sitting here thinking, God, you're doing stuff with rhinestones. The only thing I know of was the bejewelers. Like, oh my God, that would take forever. It's essentially the same concept, but we just do it all at once. So we both have two heat presses. Man, yeah, you definitely need to get that garage set up then. Yeah, that's the hope. Now, are you are, so? If you get the no, let me rephrase that. When you get the garage set up, are you still going to both be working from separate places? Or coming together to work like a real business. Well, no, because you're still working full time, right, I'm still Rachel? Full time. Okay. Um, but we do a lot of stuff at night, or we both do better at night um, working as well. So. Um, well, yeah, I guess so. With two girls, the time going out and having a good time's <laughs> over with. Um, but like, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't do screen printing from my location. I would right. do it from hers because she would have a, a better setup. But a lot of the stuff, because we both have machines, like I have two crickets, she has a silhouette. Um, a lot of that stuff can be duplicated on both machines. Um, so we can still work individually getting something, uh, even just getting one order. Right. The, the goal would be to have multiple orders. So if she's working on one order, I'd be working on another okay. order. So we can still work separately at times. 
and together at other times. But if we had like a big screen printing order, then we would obviously work together. So you guys, when you design everything, is it by hand or do you do it on a computer? It's all, everything is um, on computers. There's like okay. a graphic design aspect to it. So, so okay. far, all of um, our designs that we've released are our own designs. So we um, design them from scratch. And then all of our custom orders, too. We um, And we love custom orders. Actually, that's been like the biggest um, part of our business, which I was actually surprised about is more people want custom. They want a like, one of a sure. kind. Yeah. Yeah. So Makes we've sense. been doing a lot of design work um, hmm. for individuals. So, all right, so you're doing shirts, T-shirts, well, all kinds of shirts, right? Yes. I guess so. You have to. If people want their logo. Like, okay, you guys are looking at me. So, I guess I got to come to you for new shirts. <laughs> um, hats, too? Yep. Everything? Yeah. Holy cow. Okay. So, what? tell everybody what the website is. Um, it's www.perfectcraftyladies.com but perfect is spelled P-U-R-F-E-C-T and our logo has a cat on it. So that's oh, so how you we guys got do have Perfect the logo Crafty design. Ladies. Hmm, yeah. okay. And social media? Um, Facebook.com slash Perfect Crafty Ladies and Instagram at Perfect Crafty Ladies. No, no, uh, What's what's the video thing? TikTok because oh, so, we so, have a TikTok. You do? Yep. At, I bet I know who's not on it though. I'm not. I, uh, I didn't think so. <laughs> hey, you're setting up the YouTube channel. Yep. I mean, you guys are you're you're going all out on this. I love this. I mean, in just the couple months, you're have either of you actually? I mean, do you have a degree in business or anything? Either one of you? No. 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 It's just the passion. You love it. And, yeah, wow. I, I mean, that's just. It's kind of like when passion meets need. So we've always yeah. been like go big or go home crafter. So, like, when we decide we're going to do something, it's like we're doing it all the way or we're not going to do it. So then when the need happened, when I needed to be able to work from home, mm -hmm. um, so that way I can be with my daughter. You know, it's really easy when I'm at home in an office. Yeah. I can check on her every 30 minutes versus, you know, um, a 12 hour shift um, that it's a lot different. So when the need hit and a 12 hour shift, what were, if you don't mind me asking, what were you doing before all this? Um, so I am a nurse. Really? Um, yes. So, I did not know that. Yeah. So I am a nurse. Um, so I work at the hospital for 12 hour overnights and um, spending that so the problem is not only then when I be gone three nights a week, Oof. then they're sleeping the next day. Yeah. So I'm just missing too much. It's like too much crucial time. Um, when she got sick, it would happen to be on a weekend I worked when she really started to decompensate. Right. So like the idea is kind of in my head, like I never want to be in a position where I'm not available. I'm not assessing her. And of course, everybody now is aware and knows, but it's still on the back of my head. Like I want to lay eyes on her yeah. as often as I can. Well, thank God you got that degree in nursing then because, I mean, that definitely, is, you know, I, I would be more comfortable. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it makes Matt more comfortable knowing that you're at home being a nurse, you know, with Bella. And where do you find the time to work, though? Because you have Nora's in what, gymnastics? Yes. And swimming, right? Yes. What else is she doing besides trying to break my hip? <laughs> She's a dancer. <laughs> So she's doing dance too? Yes, she is a dancer. Gymnastics, dance, and swimming. Yes. <laughs> Man. I have trouble keeping up. Uh, <laughs> give them quick plugs real quick. So where is she where is she doing gymnastics at? Hartford Gymnastics. Okay. And then she does dance at Center Point. Center Point. Yeah, so it's um a dance studio in White Marsh. They're awesome. They have a great okay. I've never um heard of them. They have a great younger kid program and actually my um miss nicole she was my dance teacher back in the day um huh. and so now she gets to teach my daughter so it's really cool that's pretty cool and where's she doing swimming at um a combination she's um the last place we were at is kids for swim up in bel-air oh well yeah festival of bel-air yep okay I, I forgot they were still open i thought yeah. they closed down especially during the pandemic oh no and they really um they started classes again and that's good doing it all yeah that's good you guys got anything to add i don't think so thank you for oh. having us oh it's my pleasure
If you have an idea or something or someone you would like to hear on the podcast, let me know. Send me an email at podcast at harfordcountyliving.com. Again, that's podcast at harfordcountyliving.com. And also, please leave a review. All you need to do is go to lovethepodcast.com forward slash harco living. Again, lovethepodcast.com forward slash harco living. Please leave a review. It helps me determine what type of guests to get on and subjects to talk about as well. And not only that, if you leave a review, I tend to give away prizes a lot, gift cards. You know, my sponsors provide me with things that allow me to do that. So, you know, you're automatically entered once you leave a review. Even years down the road, if you left one today, if you left one last year, you're still eligible to, of course, win the prize. And also, if you don't mind, please follow our Facebook pages at Harford County Living with Rich Bennett, which is facebook.com forward slash HCL show. And Harford County Living as well, which is facebook.com forward slash Harford County Living. And, of course, if you can, please support the show. Just go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Harco Living. And every little donation helps me to keep this going. So, again, that's buymeacoffee.com forward slash Harco Living. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's Best Roofing Contractor and Best Home Improvement Contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Heel Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410 410- 6387021 experience the excellence and community impact for yourself tar hill construction group building excellence one roof at a time